Sure, Michael, you can wear your shorts uniform to school. Just as I turn the camera on. Okay, Merida for size season 14. Jasmina and Michael is going at it. And me and Lou Michael is going at it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I just turned the camera on here. But can I wear the shorts uniform? Because the temperature fell, y'all. The temperature fell. It's back down to 50. Because I came down Sunday and I smelled the heat. And I'm like, the heat? I ignored it. But then I had to go to the bathroom and it was hot in the bathroom. And I'm like, wait a minute. The heat felt that bad. The temperature felt that bad that the heat came back on. So my husband had forgot to turn the thing off. So, you know, so, so honey, anyways, yes, honey. So Michael and Jasmina is going at it online and, um, you know, I, Married at First Sight do get on my nerves, but I do love Married at First Sight. This is something I've, I've, I haven't talked about, but I guess I need to talk about it more. This, this is how I, this is the only way I can make sense of Married at First Sight. Okay. I, I like, let me put up Jasmina and Michael, just in case y'all forgot who they are. I like Married at First Sight. I've never said this, but I'm going to say it because it is a snapshot of the dating population. Okay. Especially for women who are more established and have their stuff together. Okay. Let's use Let's use um, Merla, Queen Merla, and the Dusty, for example. Okay, Queen Merla is represents a demographics of women, a lot of women, especially women of color, who got there together, but just cannot meet a decent man who also have his together. And so what a lot of women do is they compromise who they are and what they want so they can have a Dusty in their lives and, and she's the breadwinner, she's taking care of him, he's a bomb, he, he 40, but he ain't got no direction for his life, he's still trying to get his together at 40, okay? And so if you really pay attention to Merit at first sight, the Dusty Pastor Cal uh, and the Pikmisha Viviana, because she's a Pikmisha too, okay? The only one I won't be talking crap about is Dr. Pepper. I love me some Dr. Pepper, and uh, she's from demographics of people who they don't put up with the bullshit. You, got your, you have to have your stuff together, okay? So we're not going to talk about Dr. Pepper, okay? Uh, uh, Cal is a Pikmi, is a Dusty, and Viviana was a Pikmisha. And so what you see, if you really pay attention, is a picture of the dating, um, the dating scene for a lot of women of color, but also for a lot of women who have our stuff together. There's just not, especially for women of color, Negroes like me, as, let's just stick with college educated women, right? College educated women who might most of us also desire a college educated man who has it together is hard to find one. And I really wish somebody, I'm going to write to that professor who wrote the book, Marriage is for Black People. He wrote it in the 90s, but it's been about 20 or 30 years. And I would like for him to do, to rewrite the book or do something else. Because women of color, Negroes, are trying to find a suitable mate, a suitable husband. Let me say, oh, church girls want to get married too. A suitable husband is find it, find it, has been finding it difficult in uh, our community if we also want a black man. Okay, because unfortunately, uh, this is why I need somebody to do a study. You, we cannot have so many black men in jail 
and it doesn't have an effect on the black community. That is impossible. That's why I don't understand these people who yell and scream to say there's not a shortage of black men. Look in your college classrooms. I'm talking to, to women, let's just, one demographics, women, black women who also want a college education, man, okay? Look at your college classroom. One, two. Okay, I was in the 90s, Professor Gunther said, black women, look around. Hey, you know, and, and this is the Essex County College. This is a black college. Okay, he must. There wasn't too many. And a few years ago, I read a study that black men make up seven or eight percent of the black population in the United States. The numbers may be off, but you will get the message. But they make up 35 percent of the jail population. I am not very good with math, but I just don't, I don't understand. OK, so married at first sight really is presenting us a picture of what it is for a lot of women. And then for those of us black women, we were told, not me, uh, I had Caribbean parents. So we, you know, we didn't talk like that back then. Black woman, you're told to go to college, get you a degree. You don't need a man. You can do it all by yourself. You are a strong, independent black woman who don't need a man. Yet, yet, we have all these babies. We have all these babies from all these strong, independent black women who don't need a man. And I'm trying to figure out where are all these babies coming from? Because what the devil will never be able to counterfeit is to counterfeit how a baby is made, sperm and egg. See, the devil counterfeits marriages. He counterfeits salvation. He counterfeits peace. He counterfeits everything, okay? He's even counterfeiting people. But what the devil will never be able to counterfeit is how a baby is a sperm got to meet the egg. I don't care if you put it in a Petri dish. I don't care if they take it out and put it at whatever. Sperm got to meet eggs to make a human being. Okay. In the meantime, our white girlfriends, they was told go to school and get a ring by spring. And the black girls, well, you don't need no man. Okay. And then we get 35 and 40. <sighs> Girl, I'm tired. Girl, I'm tired. I need me a husband. Oh. But for 20, 25 years, and this is another thing I'm going to be writing about, ladies, black women. For 20, 25 years, you, I don't need no man, girl. I'm a strong, independent black woman. I don't need a man. Then you get 35, 40, and you were like, I, I, I want to get married. And what you don't realize. is for 20 years you was planting seeds of i don't need a man and now you get to 35 40 i, I, I want to get married i want to get married and what you don't realize all those seeds you planted of i don't need a man you need to go back and pick all of them up baby because the bible is right when it says death and life is in the power of your tongue this is not what i wanted to talk about today Death and life is in the power of your tongue and you will have the fruit. And black women are reaping the fruit of I don't need a man. Oh, oh that's not what that means. That I was reading somebody. That's not what that means. That's not what that means. Let me talk about the devil, honey. The devil is like Facebook. He don't deal in context. I was put in Facebook jail because I said I would whoop somebody's They don't deal with context. If you say it out of your mouth, that's what it means. I don't need a man. And then another thing, people talk about Jasmine as being masculine. A lot of people don't understand that. <laughs> If you go back to the Bible into book of Genesis and read the story about Adam and Eve, people do not understand that Adam creates the environment for Eve to be. 
So ladies, this is why I'm on you Facebook, YouTube, yelling and screaming every day for the girls that's not married yet to choose wisely. Because depending on who you choose, he will determine the rest of your life. So yes, Jasmina might seem aggressive, and came off as masculine. But did y'all forget Mike? They didn't talk for 30 days. I don't know about you, but I would be aggressive too. Our femininity and our softness is dependent on the environment that our husbands provide. This is why I wrote in the Naked Wife, as this is a lot of stuff the church lied to us about. Remember that saying they used to say, wife makes the home and she sets the tone of the home. Where? Where? How? You want to tell me you have an abusive, alcoholic, narcissistic husband and you think <laughs> you're going to set the tone of the home when the head of the home is being the devil. Make it make sense to me. So yeah, Jasmine and Michael didn't talk for a whole, see, see, because I know, I was thinking about, before I met Michael, fresh out of college, I, when I woke Lexi up, every I would be yelling, and Lexi, hurry up, get, you'll take you too long, girl. Oh my God, we gonna miss the bus. Oh my God, hurry up and eat. Oh my God, hurry up, put your clothes on. And I was, I can't, I can't do that. That's not me. So you know what I did, y'all? I would wake her up at 5 or 5.30 in the morning so she could have all the time she needs in the bathroom and get dressed and eat so we can leave the house at 7.30, 7.45 so I can drive across town to meet the bus at 8 o'clock so I can get at 7.30. I'm sorry. I will leave the house at 7, 7.15. Meet the bus at 7.30 so I could get on the highway to get to work at 8. Once I started doing that, I wasn't all loud and aggressive. And, ah, hurry up, girl, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So you can't tell me the man, your husband, is this terrible person and you're going to be this soft, feminine woman. It's not going to happen. Because they set the tone of the home. The wife doesn't set the tone. The husband sets the tone of the home. And we exist in the tone that he set. Read in the book, The Naked Wife, about the man with the cheap, the woman with the cheap husband. Okay, no matter what she did, that, that piece of bum was a cheap man. So I know y'all want to be blaming Jasmine, and I, I know she's twenty. She she's uh she's still in her twenties. I hope she gets some book to soften up because she is. She's a little tough, but who was she married to? A man who doesn't communicate, and what's the word? He got problems. And so ladies, when you have a man who you're not able to rest in your femininity, you will come off as masculine. See, a lot of people talk about the, the Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, the, 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 the people who don't study their Bible do not understand that the Proverbs 31 woman was because of her husband. And y'all talk about she, Proverbs 31 woman, was working to pay bills. Dumb, dumb. Read the Bible. Proverbs 31 woman, husband was a judge. A judge. Do you know how important judges are? Before Israel got a king, there were judges. Sam, Samuel, uh, Samson were judges. And when the people asked for a king, then it was king and the judges. And then as time went by, it was king, high priest, prophet, and right under them was judge. The Proverbs 31 woman Husband was a judge, baby. She didn't need to pay no bills. The Proverbs 31 woman was because of her husband. So when y'all want to talk about Jasmina, 
I just want you to remember who she was married to. And so I said all that to say this. I felt like the spirit got on me this morning, okay? Mm -hmm. And so in this in this uh, Instagram shot, and that little shrimp needs to just shut his mouth, okay? Little shrimp needs to just be quiet. So somebody says to Michael, he says on his post, if I don't do anything, I, I'm a smile. Uh, Bridge says to him, dude, you lost a nice looking woman. You're not going to find a woman if you don't loosen up, my dude. I uh, was the same way at one time, but thank God, been married 17 years. Right, because Michael has major problems. And if you notice, they choose all the people with the problems. They don't choose men who are mature and are ready to be husband. Go back, every last one of them got problems. You just don't hear the problems because you're being emotional, but they all got problems. Michael responded with his little shrimp self. Granted, there's nothing he can do about being a little Napoleon. I didn't lose anyone. Looks are will never be enough for me to stay with someone. I am much happier now, so I am sure I made the right decision. And see, what the man is saying is, well, little Michael, he can lie as much as he wants to because y'all men know you all have to find us attractive and beautiful. No matter if I could be ugly to somebody else, never been told that, but as long I have to be attractive and and my husband have to think I'm good looking. So honey, Jasmina jumped on <clears throat> and said, go ahead, Jasmina. You know, I've been trying to stay out of it. I'm going to put my petty boots on this morning because I don't care. When people comment on my photos and make remarks about Mike, I keep it cute on mute out of respect of what we built. But when you write things like this, making it seem like I am, all I am is looks. When you spent every single day with me and I know that I am so much more. That's when I draw the line. At the end of the day, hurt people will try to hurt people. Don't try to play along with the narrative that's on TV because if I ever open my mouth and say every single thing that you did that was not shown, it wouldn't be pretty. What people fail to realize is there's always a reason for my attitude and stubbornness. I've been quiet and I've left myself let myself be painted as a villain without pointing fingers at you and explaining why I was the way I was. I can handle people opinions about me under a false narrative, but don't make the mistake of getting caught up in the limelight of people feeling bad for you when you know what really went down. I have spoken my truth because I know much you I know how much you voiced in the beginning about how you would look if certain things was to get out. So moving forward, hubby, let's respect the space that each other is in. Be happy without throwing a shot at the other person. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. Little, my, little Jasmina checked a little shrimp. No, I, I, I agree with her. He ain't never going to get another woman as beautiful as Jasmine. Jasmine is see, see, men either have to, you have to have the height you have to have good looking, good D, or you got to have money. Okay, he's short, he ain't good looking. I don't know about the D, and he ain't got no money, child. Okay, so you know. <laughs> but I have to run. But married at first sight is really a picture. It, they do it all the time. Remember, that's why I love Merla. I love Olivia that says, oh, hell no. I'm not going to bankroll your life, honey. And you see Merla is all over traveling, enjoying her life. And that bum is still living in a, in a hole of an apartment. Okay. They always, they always, and I just, every season, you know, I'm keeping hope alive that every season, this, every new season, they're going to actually match people who are matchable because a lot of you ladies, the naked wife, y'all marry these men.
that you know you are not matchable with. You're not matchable with them, so you end up becoming the naked wife, and you married them on the false pretense because you thought you could fix them, but you can't fix them, child. You can't fix them, and you can't change them. The only man you're supposed to be changing is the baby. Not a grown behind dusty of a man. I have to go. I love you. Thank you for your love and support. Listen, run over to Amazon if you have not reviewed The Naked Wife, honey. Thankfully, I finally got to 60 reviews. And the last review that came in, obviously, I was stepping on somebody's toe. So run over to Amazon. Check that review. Uh, check to see if you can do a review for me and uh, let me know. I also love you. Remember my Patreon? Um, and uh, the reviews I need on all of my books. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye.